All right, hey, what's up, guys? So today, let's talk about belts. Now, um, we're not going to talk about like inner belts or uh, uh, EDC belts or anything like that. We're going to talk about outer belts. Now, outer belts meaning like a um, outer or a belt that you go over an inner belt or you just put over everything or any of those kind of things, I would, I would satisfy as an outer belt per se. Now, when it comes to an outer belt, a lot of people, um, they also call them war belts or things like that, but it's honestly just like a plate carrier or just like any kind of a chest rig or anything like that. It's a load bearing system for you to carry equipment that you'll need without putting it in your pockets, essentially. Now, when it comes to it, there are kind of different flavors to them. These are three different flavors that I use to wear belts and set up my belts so that I have them appropriately set up for what I do. Now, um, we'll talk about them, but here is like my, uh, what would be my teaching belt, my training belt slash like if I had to have a duty belt, that's what is over here. This is my, uh, USPSA belt and rig. And then over here is kind of like my general purpose, like hiking slash like just, uh, need it more than what's in my pockets kind of belt. Now, uh, with all that, right. Remember each of these belts are set up for me. So I would not go out and just copycat them or just buy all the things and put them all together like this because it may not work for you. You're not the same person as me. You may not be doing the same things as me and may need some kind of different setup. So we'll start out with um, the uh, USVSA belt and go from there. Now with this belt, I started out with a base belt from uh, Frank Proctor shooting. Uh, Frank Proctor, or Frank in general, has been a mentor of mine for a long time. I, I love the dude. He makes a pretty decent belt that, that conquers everything I need. It's a little less rigid than I would want for competitive shooting, but works really well. So I've been using it and, and kind of seeing like what shakes out from there. But on this belt, if, uh, if you notice, I put the buckle towards the, the back of my right hip. So I'm right-hand shooter, so my holster is going to be on the right-hand side. And, uh, and I put it behind there so that I have all this space in the front for mags, magnets, other things like timers, things like that that I may be using. So I leave this, the front slick or uh, available per se. So on, on the holster, uh, it is a TXC holster. Um, the only thing I modified about it was I put a uh, little knobs that I can tension things with my own fingers instead of using a tool. I like that for a competitive shooting rig. I like having the option to, to tension things differently, uh, depending on what I'm doing. And then inside that, or uh, what it's hung on, the hanger, is is one of the Henning Group T1000s. Um, I bought it specifically because it was a T1000. No, I'm kidding. I bought it specifically because it offers a lot of canting in different ways. So it not only gives you this kind of turn with or canting with the holster, it also does this. And it also individually does a uh, small of a, I'm sorry, a this motion. So this, 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 and this. Really crazy. So four different uh, flavors on where you can place this thing and how you can organize it. Really nice holster hanger. Really expensive compared to other ones. So just something to think about. Going from there around the front, just uh, left of my belly button is usually my magnet. Uh, that way I could put it, put mags down there on quick uh, table pickups kind of things or just leave one stage there or my timer actually magnets to it pretty easily too. So just useful uh, magnet for, for competitive stuff. Um, not that I would stage my mags on it for just all around like mag changes or anything like that. I don't use it as a mag pouch. It's just a staging magnet, or after I download from a stage, I'll place my magnet on there, clear my gun out, all that jazz. <clears throat> and then lastly, on the other side, uh, I have three mag pouches, and those three are TXC, also the Overt series, just like the holster of uh, pouches. Really good pouches because you can angle them a bunch of different ways. So this one, I have a couple of them that are angled really steep, and then one that's kind of like more of a 45. Uh, I like the option of like canting stuff as much as I can. I've been canting mags for a while now. It's been a few years, and I really like it. Uh, I took it from the competitive world and uh, and applied it to the other side of things, and it's been it's been really nice. So I really like it. Uh, maybe an option for you if, if you're looking for something like that. So that's my uh, USPSA belt. Now, um, over here we have my 
duty belt or the one that I use for like teaching and other things like that. I do compete in it every once in a while, uh, but it's not, it's not something I solely use for everything. Although you probably could, like you could have one belt to rule them all, but you may have to change things here and there. But we'll talk about how much I've done to this thing to make it exactly what I want, but also, uh, I guess, give me the option to add or subtract or use different things based off what I'm doing. So first off, the base belt is a blue alpha gear, uh, or sorry, blue alpha uh, belt. Uh, they It's their light belt, so which is really nice. It it offers a lot of adjustment for very little, like, loose uh, tails. I've been using their belts for years now. They've been friends of mine for almost 10 years. And what I find is uh, this the, this belt has been phenomenal for me. So their old belt, which is actually this one right here, had like a tail, right? And there's a tail hanging out on this side. I slipped it all the way through. But what, what sucks about that tail is when you roll it up and it's sitting there with the cobra buckle, a lot of times it likes to wiggle itself loose. So sometimes your belt will get loose slightly and your mags and stuff will start to droop and you won't notice it until like the end of the day where you go to take it off and you're like, whoa, it's loose-ish. So I don't like that happening. Um, I used to see it happen with my AXL belt and stuff like that too because the G-hook style, anything that has like a loose end that can eventually work its way loose or work its way free is going to cause that same issue. So just be aware of it. It's not something that's that detrimental. It's just something you'll notice over a little bit of time. Their belt, the tail ends actually Velcro inward. So the tail loops through the actual buckle and then ends up sticking onto itself on the other end like so ish. So you can adjust it as needed whenever you want and it never has a loose like end to like deal with. Also, if you want to change the buckle out, you can. So if you want to go from plastic to a metal or metal to a plastic or whatever, you could change it out as long as it's one. Uh, it's a 1.75 inch buckle. So it actually works out really, really nice. It's super, super awesome. Uh, I've been really happy with it. Now, um, I wouldn't use it for anything like helicopter based because that's not what it's for. Uh, but other than that, as long as I don't have to clip into a vehicle, it's solid. Um, going from there, so buckle on this one is in the center-ish, and then I go right from there. So first thing is a pouch from Velocity Systems. In here, I keep a few things. So one, a Gerber, and what almost fell out, a 2032, mainly for my pistol or for like an optic uh, of any sort. I have some uh, 2032, I'm sorry, 123 batteries as well for like my lights and stuff like that. Um, in here, I also have a lens cloth and I have a tube of lube, which is in a small Occam lube syringe. Really, really nice syringe. It keeps everything from falling out and leaking out. I use grease in here versus liquid lube, uh, mainly because a liquid lube, like once you uncap it, you could just drip it. It'll be, you don't actually need a syringe, but for a grease, a syringe is kind of nice. Um, really useful thing. I may make a video on one of those at some point. Um, and then I also, with a small carabiner, have, uh, two of the nano tools and a handcuff key, uh, handcuff keys for other things, but <laughs> the nanos are really good adjustment tools for your optics and stuff like that. Really small. So they weigh nothing to have in here. And, uh, and I just clip them to the side. So I know where they are dangle, uh, dingle dangling whenever they are in there. So it's really nice, really sweet setup of, of stuff that are like necessary for me as a teacher. Or if I was using this for duty, it would probably have all the same stuff plus a set of like nitrile gloves or something like that. So things to think about, right? Then going from there, close that properly. Uh, going from there, we have my holster. Now the holster setup is the same as it was before. Um, if you guys have ever seen it, I use a high ride or no ride, whatever it's called, still don't know, uh, holster uh, hanger with a uh, female QLS on there. I like the QLS because I could switch different guns and I do use different guns. So sometimes I'm swapping those things out. Um, on the holster, it's a Safari Land 6390 RDS. Um, it is the, the one for a Glock. So it's for Glock 34. I always get the longest holster for my guns, uh, with the ALS series, cause I'm using a light anyways. So it's going to end up down here anyways, might as well get the, the length of the gun so I can go and switch to 
like a Glock 17 with a threaded barrel. I can go to a 34. I can go to a 19. It doesn't matter because the light is what is the, the length problem there. With this, though, I've done a couple of modifications to this holster specifically and all the other ones that I have because I like them a specific way. Specific way. Now, first thing um, I usually do to these things is get a nub mod. Nub mod is like a bigger button for your ALS. It's the button that activates the locking mechanism in there. Um, then I actually take the QLS fork, this fork piece, and instead of mounting it where it usually goes because it'll mount somewhere around here, I mount it higher where that little thumb guard, like fat guard thing, it's really just so that people's, uh, like when they lean over or their fat that hangs over, doesn't activate a button. And if that's how big you are, man, you, you know, fix other things. Uh, but I remove those things cause I don't need it. And I put my QLS forks up there. So it brings the holster down instead of up right, where it usually mounts, it brings it down, so now when I pull the gun out, it's pulling from the highest point on the holster, which means that it, it pulls from where I'm pulling, essentially, instead of it pulling from center, and then causing that, like, weird rotation thing that happens to people, and then they put a leg strap on there as a fix to the symptom, but instead of fixing the symptom, I want to fix the actual uh, you know point of injury or whatever or the the cause so if i go to the cause which is where it mounts i fix it so i mount it up here um i do negate a third hole whatever if you really want one you could drill one and then bolt it on there it's not hard uh i've seen people do it and then um i usually use a spacer in there to give it some offset and then i put a uh back, black box customs uh, tourniquet holder on there to hold my my tourniquet holder. This one is from uh, 10, 1110. Um, it's it's just a rigid holder. Uh, I'm looking for another one currently that will actually cover the whole thing because this is what happens to your tourniquets when they're they're out there and available for the world. So they get frayed a lot and they get ruined. So I have to swap this tourniquet, you know, every six months or so, and it's it's kind of annoying. So I don't want to have to do that. So I'm going to switch it. Um, other than that, the last thing I did, which is going to be slightly modified soon, is the bottom here. Uh, the bottom front piece that goes here, I pulled it out. Uh, I don't use it. I don't think it's necessary. And I need a, a hole for brass to fall down. And then on the side of the light, I have a Ghostman portal to go in there. But I ordered the, the actual foamy pieces that go on it to cause the gun to lock in better because it's going against foam the foam pushes up and it locks into the mechanism really well uh, i'm waiting for that also it reduces some of the noise of the gun clanking around in there so i'm waiting for that thing to come in before i pop it in there but that's what's going next in this thing um other than that the only last thing that i did was i drilled a little bit more space in the hole in the slot that the screw goes in on the QLS so that I could torque the QLS a little bit more or turn it. So now instead of my holster being straight, it sits slightly backwards. So I like, I like it when the grip sits like this ish. And now I can actually scoop that holster or that, that gun out of the holster pretty easily. Uh, just based off the angle. If you're using the forward angle that it comes with, I will tell you, you're going to have trouble holstering and drawing the holster uh, smoothly most of the time. It's also kind of a preference thing. So I, I see a lot of people get hung up that way versus the other way. Something to think about. Now, going further, uh, I have a Spiritus uh, um, spud pouch. Jeez. Uh, the spud pouch is one that I use for like more admin -y. So it's on the range. I use it for water bottles. Uh, I could use it for mags. I could use it for radio. I could use it for whatever. Um, if I'm handed a smoke, I could put it in there. If I'm handed a CS grenade, I could put it in there. All the other things that can come up, I want something administratively that I can put some stuff in. And the, the spud pouch is literally made to fit almost anything you want. Uh, as long as it's within that form factor, obviously you're not putting like another rifle in there. So, uh, it is something that I really like. The flap is removable, but I keep it in there and I stow it. I shove it all in. So if you can't tell, the, the flap is in here. That uh, I forget what they call that cut, but that funky cutting that they do, something with a P, uh, I just shove it all the way in there so that it stays in. So if I need the flap, I can flip it over and still utilize it. 
Then you'll notice the back of my uh, belt is slick, like usual. I like keeping it slick sitting in cars or um, trying to like fit in small spaces. I can turn sideways and stuff and I'm not hanging up on a lot of things. Uh, my med pouch does kind of hang a little bit over my, my like left butt cheek almost. It kind of gets a, a near that area. So it isn't the worst uh, or it isn't the slickest back, but it, it gives me as much as I can. And with that... Uh, comes the med pouch, right? So this is the practical individual medical pouch, the pimp. Uh, it's made by Flatline Fiber Co. It was one of the designs that him and I came out with. Uh, so it's something that's available on my website and on his website. And it is just a really nice, easy med pouch. So it consists of a uh, essentially a part that stays on your belt. So a sleeve and then an inner like diaper kind of thing. And the diaper thing, obviously you can open it up. You have space for gloves and dirt, uh, and, and you have space for all your medical equipment folded up in there. And then when you fold this thing and you pack it nice and tight, you also have a space for your shears right on the outside. So you could actually put shears in here. You could put full size ones in there, but I use the smaller ones because it's smaller profile. I don't need gigantic ones usually. Um, and all of that fits right in here. And let's say you're like going and, and taking a trip and want to take medical with you, you could easily carry it all in the sleeve and not have to use this outer portion. Um, but either way, it's really cool. It's a nice, simple one. It has a pass through for a belt. It also uses one wrap to go on there. That's usually how I do it. And then I like to keep this sleeve really, really tight because I don't want the chances of, of it sliding out ever, whether I'm on a, a boat, a helicopter or whatever. So I don't take the chance of it sliding out by making sure it's really tight in there. So there we go. So from there, uh, let me tighten this down so I don't forget. All right. And then with the excess, I usually slide it under more of the shock cord on the side. So from there we get to the back end or sorry the back left of me which is my mag pouch so i use a uh good old defense mechanisms mag pouch it's soft it's flexible so it can fit a bunch of different things and i use their ar10 style one i don't use the ar15 one uh, even though i put ar15 mags in there the most uh it, the ar10 one allows me to put bolt gun mags like aics ones i could put uh, my tika mags in there i could put all sorts of stuff ak mags if I'm, I'm so inclined um but it allows me to fit a lot of stuff in one mag pouch uh versus trying to find another mag pouch for that thingy and put it on and take it off and all that stuff so I like one mag pouch. So it, it fits all those things really nice. So I'm like, well, cool. Um, underneath it, you'll find uh, I usually have a dump pouch. Now, some people don't like dump pouches. I, I don't disagree with you that they do get hung up on things. But sometimes it's nice to have one. The cool part is this dump pouch, also created by myself and Flatline Fiber Co. So Chad over there. Um, we created this dump pouch to be super minimal. Super minimal. So it doesn't even take up space on your belt. It also hides underneath your mag pouch, so it disappears when you don't need it. And if you actually need one for any instance, whether you need to throw something in there, you need to throw a gas mask in or something like that, it comes in a couple different sizes. Uh, you could literally open it up and boom, you have a mag pouch, or sorry, a dump pouch that you shove whatever in. Um, if you get extra equipment for a mission, if you need it for anything, this is the mini. So it's a little smaller. Um, I do like the size a lot, but the larger one also has inner pockets that you can organize with and they all cinch down really good. So cool little thing. Um, then right next to it, you'll see, I have, uh, a blue force, uh, gear Marcos, um, container or dispenser and my gloves. Now, both of them are routed on the same piece of one wrap. So it's a one inch piece of one wrap that goes all the way around. It's just literally two sided Velcro, if you want to call it that, but it's one wrap is what it's actually called if you want to look it up. And the Marcos are for chem lights. So you can, you can go ahead, pop these and have a chem light and dispense them. And they can be dispensed obviously outwardly like this or, or stowed in the, on the belt like this. But when I'm not using them, I'll, eat, I'll make sure I put them away and put them under or in, inside itself so that it's not getting UV damage because it's very easy to damage those. So if you ever see somebody's chem lights orange, they may not be orange chem lights. They may be green ones that got UV damage. And then when I'm not using it, I unclip it and I put it away. I don't, I don't need it on my belt all the time. 
Um, I only use it when I have nighttime stuff to do. And then underneath there, I have one of those uh, HK hooks, right, uh, to put my gloves on. And I usually use some kind of pig glove or mechanic glove. They're pretty nice, easy, they're not expensive, and they're a wear item, so I expect them to die at some point. So that's what I do with that kind of stuff right there. Let me fix that. And then over here uh, along the side, still on my left side, I have two TXC mag pouches for handgun. Um, these are both Glock ones, but they fit my MMP also when I tighten them down. And then over here is a piece, uh, what is it called again? Tac. Tack trap, Jesus, I'm trying to read it upside down, sorry. So tack trap, it's it's mainly for like my ear pro is what I use it for, but my, my timer with my 550 cord loop fit on there really good. And it's just a magnetic hook or loop, uh, really useful. It's smaller or lower profile than using a big carabiner, but it works the same way. And, uh, but it's just quicker, like it's a little magnetic thing. I can pull things off, pop it back on. Really nice, super simple. I like it a lot. It's, it's actually, Something I didn't know I needed until I got it, and then I was like, that's cool. So uh, they also made me one with my logo on it, which was really nice of them. So thanks, guys, at Neomag. So, guys, that's that's my duty belt, training belt, uh, teaching belt kind of thing, All right? And then lastly, let's talk about this random piece of equipment. So uh, I had this spare uh, blue, for, or blue alpha belt just chilling. And I realized, I was like, man, I could use this for something. And uh, just so happens that I was going on a little like hike and needed something to carry some equipment on my hips so that I could keep medical, I could potentially keep a handgun, some snacky poos, something to throw things in, like multi-tool and stuff like that. And, uh, and it was cold out at the time, so I used a hand warmer on the front. And lo and behold, my extra belt was perfect for it. I just grabbed a bunch of pouches that I had laying around that I wasn't using and threw them on here. So what this consists of is a blue alpha gear, or sorry, blue alpha belt, which the buckles on my right side here. Um, on, on the front, you can see it's a hand warmer from Defense Mechanisms, super simple. Also has a zip, zipper pocket for your, um, for anything really, but it's for hand warmers, like the actual packets, but I throw whatever in there. Uh, then along the, the right side, I actually have a handgun like holster here inside of this shepherd associated pouch which is really cool so they made something similar to the gisto where it has that back end and it's a gp pouch it's like a medium-sized gp pouch so i could put whatever i want in there plus a handgun and then on the left side i have a gista which is a gista and it has a mag pouch for both an ar and a pistol in there plus the front end is all medical plus a multi-tool so it offers quite a few things that uh, that I don't normally need my whole belt here to go on a hike. And I don't need, uh, obviously my USPSA rig is too small for a hike. Uh, but if I take my carry gun and I slide it right in here and my spare mag and slide it right in here, now I can go on a hike pretty easily with a pack. And this doesn't get in the way of it. And it works out really, really nice. So kind of a cool little like, I don't know, Franken belt. Um, and on the inside I have some of the, core uh, performance um, pads. So it acts a little bit as a, a, a little bit of a coverage for my hips and stuff if I wanted, or I take them off and I just slide it onto my inner belt or Velcro it onto my inner belt and I'm good to go. So just a different way of looking at it, kind of a different uh, flavor on belt setups. I have thought about routing this through the bottom of my pack and making it like a waist belt to my pack. So I've thought about doing stuff like that. So we'll see where it goes, but it's, it's just something I'm playing around with. Nothing like crazy or nothing that you have to actually like use or have. It's just something interesting that I found useful for myself on hikes and stuff. So those are my three belts currently set up and for what they are. And, uh, it's obviously nothing wild, nothing crazy, but remember, look at what you need, put that on the belt and then go from there. Don't go back and try to like just copy things. It just doesn't help you in any way. And it also kind of one that we know you're copying somebody. If you don't know what the heck you're putting on your belt, we also know you're not, you don't know what you're doing. If you put mags all over the place, all the way down the back of your belt and everything, like just put a couple on there, right? A couple pistol, a rifle, maybe a couple rifle, if you really want to medical and a holster and, and go from there, right? And see, see what you can get 
like what you need from there. And I would say like the more experience you have with it, the more you use it, the more you're going to gain understanding of what you're going to need for it or what you really don't need and you can, you know, take off of it. So hope that helps guys. And if you need anything, let me know, put it down below. Take care.